find out what's happening this week in the world of books this and every Monday. Stay tuned! Welcome to Biblio Happy Hours Biblio News segment, where we will be sharing new releases for this week, other titles to look out for in future, bookstore events, and what's trending. Before I get started, I just wanted you to know that you can listen to our off-the-cuff discussions, get our monthly top-shelf new release recommendations, behind-the-scenes content, perks, and more over on our Patreon page. Patreon is a super easy way to support the show, plus it helps us to grow and embark on new and amazing projects for both the book and bookstore community. So check out the details over at patreon.com forward slash bibliofinder. And without further ado, here's what's new for the week of Monday, October 14th. Before I get started with what's new this week, I'm going to backpedal to one major event that happened last week. The Nobel Prizes in Literature for 2018 and 2019 were announced. The Nobel Prize in Literature for 2018 is awarded to the Polish author Olga Tokazok. The Nobel Prize in Literature for 2019 is awarded to the Austrian author Peter Hanke. Now with this announcement also came some criticism. Pen America and some authors have objected to the selection of Hanke for the award. Also in Book Award news, the Man Booker winner will be announced today, so keep your eyes peeled for an announcement. Now, I'll be mentioning some of the books that will be available on bookshelves during the week of October 14th. New from Catapult Books is Celestial Bodies by Joka Alhathi, translated by Marilyn Booth. Celestial Bodies is the winner of the 2019 Man Booker International Prize. It is also the first novel by an Omani woman to be translated in English. New from Grey Wolf is Suicide Woods, a story collection by Benjamin Percy. As described by Shelf Awareness, and I quote, This is an addictive mix of gritty crime fiction and otherworldly horror. New from Random House is Dear Girls, Intimate tales, untold secrets, and advice for living your best life. And this is by Ali Wong. Ali Wong resonated in her hit Netflix comedy, Baby Cobra. Wong told the world her unfiltered thoughts on marriage, sex, Asian culture, working women, and why you never see new moms comics on stage, but you see plenty of new dads. Also new from Random House is Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. In this book, the iconic Olive not only struggles to understand herself and her own life, but also those around her in the town of Crosby, Maine. Also new from Random House is Christmas Shopaholics by Sophie Kinsella. Kinsella returns with a festive new shopaholic adventure filled with holiday cheer and unexpected gifts. Main character Becky is asked if she will host Christmas this year. What could possibly go wrong? But as the countdown to Christmas begins and her big-hearted plans take an unexpected turn towards disaster, Becky starts to wonder if chaos will ensue, or if she'll manage to bring comfort and joy to Christmas after all. Also new from Random House is America is Immigrants by Sarah Novick, illustrated by Alison Colsa. This is a gorgeous illustrated collection profiling inspiring immigrants from every single country in the world, from tiny Monaco to massive Russia, celebrating the incredible range of what it means to be an American. Featured are war heroes, fashion designers, Supreme Court justices and pop stars, athletes and civil rights leaders. Also new from Random House is Let It Snow by Nancy Thayer. In this novel, a Nantucket shopkeeper discovers that Christmas is a perfect occasion to make unexpected friendships, warm the coldest of hearts, and maybe even find love. New in paperback from Harper Perennial is Unsheltered by Barbara Kingslover. New this week from Harper is It Would Be Night in Caracas by Karina Sainz-Borgo, translated by Elizabeth Breyer. 
It would be night in Caracas chronicles one woman's desperate battle to survive amid the dangerous, sometimes deadly, turbulence of modern Venezuela and the lens she must go to secure her future. New this week from Tin House Books is Divide Me by Zero, and we have the author Laura Vapnia here with us to share all the details. Laura, welcome to Biblio Happy Hour. Oh, thank you so much. I am so glad to be here. So tell us about your novel, Divide Me by Zero. Okay, the title comes from the theme of math in the novel. It comes from my mother, mm. who was uh, a famous math textbook author back in Russia. She, she wrote several textbooks, but they were straightforward uh, textbooks on math for children. But as she was dying, she left uh, something very strange like notes for her future textbook and they were barely legible but it just it broke my heart that she was writing them even though she knew that she was dying and I felt that I just had to do something about them so the idea came to me to write a novel which is based on a character's mother's notes for her unfinished textbook Mm. But I imagined that the notes were more legible than they actually were. And the notes contained some veiled advice on how um, a character should live her life after the mother dies. Was this based on a personal experience of yours, even though the novel is a work of fiction? Uh, a lot of it, yes, is based on my personal experience. My daughter who reads uh, everything that I write, she said that usually in my novels, she is looking for things that are true. And in this novel, she had to look for things that weren't true. So it's, uh, I would say, more than 80% autobiographical. What part of the novel did you enjoy writing the most? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Mm, when you say the word enjoy, it's, um, like it has a strange meaning for, for me because some parts of the novel were extremely painful. Like I was crying for days when I was writing them. And yet somehow uh, these parts were the most enjoyable because I felt something like catharsis mm. after I finished them. But there were just fun parts. Uh, there is a lot of humor in the novel and after I finish some uh, really serious, painful, hard heartbreaking bit, mm -hmm. I would uh, devote myself to writing a lighter, more humorous chapter. It, it would help me cope with writing this novel, mm -hmm. and I think it um, benefited the novel in general. How long did it take to write Divide Me by Zero? I think it was something like three years, mm -hmm. but there were some active periods when I felt inspired and when I was writing a lot. And there were some miserable periods where I was in despair and I couldn't write a word and I thought that um, I am at a dead end with this novel. What is your favorite underappreciated novel? Um, it just came out and uh, I hope it will be appreciated as an English translation of uh, a Russian novel by Margarita Hemlina called Klotzuk an absolutely amazing novel uh, it's so well i thought that divide me by zero was extremely honest uh, painfully honest and sometimes you can't take it but after i read klotzwick i understood that it's more honest more brutal and uh, like, uh, this is an amazing novel that it tells you something that some true about what it was like to be uh, a Jewish woman in the Soviet Union, which I recognized as true after reading the novel, but I never uh, thought about it myself. So and this is a novel that could change your perception of life and um, in the process change your life. Uh, getting back to the novel Divide Me by Zero, uh, how do you want readers to feel after reading this book? Well, uh, Ideally, I would want readers to feel something about themselves when they're reading the novel because it's so personal, it's so honest. And the only uh, point in reading a novel like that is that something clicks, something about experiences of the character in the novel click with your own experience. And then you look at your life and you realize something uh, 
about your life that you haven't realized before. For example, you realize that people that love you were not trying to hurt you. They, they were trying to help, they were just imperfect or something like this. Or that pursuit of love could be ruinous, but at the same time, uh, you're forgiven for doing this because you can't help it. So what I want is for readers to really understand my characters who might be unlikable, but she is human and she is honest. And I do want her experience to click, to become meaningful to the reader's uh, own personal experience. Laura, thank you so much for coming on the show. Divide Me by Zero will be available in bookstores on Tuesday, October 15th. Thank you so much. Tune in to our off-the-cuff discussion over on our Patreon page, where I will continue the conversation with author Laura Vapinia. We dive deeper into the concept of her novel, Divide Me by Zero, she shares what her working schedule is like when she's writing, how publishing her first book changed her process of writing, dealing with judgment and criticism as an author, some advice to her younger self and lots more. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash bibliofinder and tune in to the rest of our discussion. New this week from FSG Books is Girl by Edna O'Brien. Here we meet the lives of the Boko Haram girls in a masterpiece of violence and tenderness. New this week from Picador Books is Lantern Slides, a story collection by Edna O'Brien. These 12 stories are rich, humorous, full of struggle and boldness, and they're a singular reflection of Edna O'Brien's artistry. Also from Picador and Edna O'Brien is a newly reissued edition of A Pagan Place, which is a haunting and poetic coming-of-age novel. Also from Picador and by Edna O'Brien is Time and Tide. This is a fragmented novel detailing the loves and catastrophes and catastrophic loves of Nell, an Irish woman trying to make a life for herself in the literary world of London. New from Henry Holt, me, Elton John's official autobiography. In his first and only official autobiography, music icon Elton John reveals the truth about his extraordinary life from his roller coaster lifestyle as seen in the film Rocket Man to becoming a living legend. New from Forge Books is Ask Me No Questions by Shelley Noble. This is book one in A Lady Dunbridge Mystery. New in paperback from Grand Central is Every Breath by Nicholas Sparks. New from Little Brown is A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Grace Dunham. This is a potent, thrillingly unresolved queer coming of age story. New from Mulholland Books is Curious Toys by Elizabeth Hand. In this novel, an intrepid young woman stalks a murderer through turn of the century Chicago in this rich, spooky and atmospheric thriller. New this week from Seal Press is Hexing the Patriarchy, 26 potions, spells, and magical elixirs to embolden the resistance. And we have the author, Ariel Gore, here with us to share all the details. Ariel, welcome to Biblio Happy Hour. Thank you. So tell us about your book. Tell us about Hexing the Patriarchy. First of all, it's a very important time to be hexing the patriarchy right now. People have been doing it for a couple of years and our, our efforts are finally starting to pay off. And the, the book is really about both using magic and focus to take down patriarchal structures, um, be they economic, military, the current president, and also taking care of ourselves and kind of protecting ourselves and protecting our communities. Um, I had... 26 different witches and kind of brujas and Orisha leading folks and magical practitioners write spells. It's organized with the alphabet. So there's one spell for each letter of the alphabet. And so they're, you know, everything from burning down capitalism and in its ashes, planting the seeds of a solidarity economy for M, uh, focus, which is focused on money, 
R is about reclaiming power, so that's more personally focused. P is for poppets, so writer Michelle T brought in a spell to teach us how to, you know, make um, little dollies of the patriarchs and stick pins in them. So it's it's drawing from a whole bunch of different magical traditions, and it's really geared towards, frankly, anyone, whether that you're an initiated witch or you're just kind of interested in exploring magic. The spells themselves are for everyone. How long did it take for you to write this book and collect all the information, all the research? Um, How long was your process? It has been about um, two years since I started the project. And so it was about about a year to a year and a half collecting the spells and doing the research. I did a lot of traveling around the U.S. and a little bit around the world to both meet up with um, witches, who are going to contribute spells or to just research different kinds of magic. What would you say is the most difficult part of your whole creative process? Well, this book in particular, you know, I usually write memoirs or novels or even purely nonfiction journalistic books that are entirely written by me. And so in some ways that's easier because I can have this vision ahead of time and and it's just kind of down to me to make it happen. This book was really interesting because I did invite all these different witches and writers to contribute. And then my job was kind of to piece it together. And so I think for this book, that was the most challenging thing to have this constantly morphing idea of what the project was going to be. For this project, I love that because it's exactly how communities work together when we're in crisis and and taking charge of our own healing and our own economic empowerment is that you know we get all this input from everyone in the community and then how do we make that into a cohesive whole so it was a cool part of working on the book and it was also quite challenging if you didn't write what would you do for work wow um, <laughs> um well i'm good at math too um I like doing things with numbers. So that might be, you know, something in there that I would do more for work. What I would do just with my time, if money wasn't a factor, is that I like to draw as well. I like to make little cartoons. I'm not, you know, traditionally, quote unquote, good at it. Um, So I'm very much in the Linda Berry school of cartoonists where it's okay to do things you're not particularly good at. How do you want readers to feel after reading Hexing the Patriarchy? I want readers to feel like we've got this. We've got this politically, we've got this magically. We are strong as communities. Um, I just, I want people to feel empowered and and also that, that we're not alone. Um, you know, part of the, the patriarchy's arsenal of weapons is to make us feel kind of alone and isolated and depressed and like there's nothing to be done about anything um and i think we all intrinsically know that that's not true but um it's tough when when their full-time job is to kind of keep us down to remember that that's that that's not real and that we have all these resources and we have each other Ariel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hexing the Patriarchy will be available in bookstores on Tuesday, October 15th. Thanks so much. Tune in to our off-the-cuff discussion over on our Patreon page, where we'll continue the conversation with author Ariel Gore. We talk more about the concept of hexing the patriarchy, We take a deep dive into her process for writing this book. She talks about some of her favorite bookstores, her favorite mode of travel, her favorite potions and spells, and she dishes up on her other projects. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash bibliofinder and tune in to the rest of our discussion. New from Simon & Schuster, Stolen. Five Free Boys Kidnapped into Slavery and Their Astonishing Odyssey Home by Richard Bell. This is a gripping and true story about five boys who were kidnapped in the North and smuggled into slavery in the Deep South, and their daring attempt to escape and bring their captors to justice. New from Atria Books is A Book of Bones by John Connolly. 
Private investigator Charlie Parker returns in this heart-pounding thriller as he seeks revenge against the darkest forces in the world. Also new from Atria is Godspeed by Casey Legger. This is a coming-of-age story filled with so much honesty about Casey Legler, one of the fastest swimmers in the world. New from Washington Square Press is All the Lies We Never Live by Anurada Roy. Alrighty everyone, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for listening and I would like to extend special thanks to Laura Vapner and Ariel Gore for coming on the show. A list of all the books mentioned in the show will be available over at bibliohappyhour.com. Don't forget to follow Biblio Happy Hour on social media and sign up for newsletters. To shop all the books I've mentioned in the show and to find a bookstore near you or when you're traveling, visit bibliofinder.com. To listen to our off-the-cuff discussions, get our monthly top-shelf new release recommendations, behind-the-scenes content, perks and more, head on over to patreon.com forward slash bibliofinder. And wherever you're listening, please don't forget to share, subscribe, rate and review the show. Alrighty everyone, that's it and I look forward to talking to you in next week's show. Bye.